Hi folks and welcome back. I'm out in the woods today to do a bit of carving. So what I'm going to be making today is a thumbstick. Now, this is probably my earliest recollection of making anything in the woods. Um, I should think I was probably five or six years old when I was first shown how to make one of these. I'm going to have another go at making one today. I've chosen and cut a hazel pole. Uh, it's about an inch thick, so it'll be ideal. Um, it's not perfectly straight, um, but it's straight enough for this. But the important thing is that it's got to have a notch in the top where your hand goes. Uh, and that's where it gets its name. You, you hold it like this and your thumb goes through the little notch, through the crook in the top there, and it makes quite a comfortable grip. So that V has formed where another shoot is growing off the main shoot of hazel. Um, and this was quite a good sized piece coming off, quite a good sized branch if you like coming off. Um, and it's forming quite a nice, good, solid, strong V at the top. So it'll be comfortable to hold and uh, hopefully it won't break. So I've just been spending a bit of time scraping the bark off. Um, and just using my knife vertically like this and running it along like that, you can just scrape off that bark quite easily. Uh, any little nodes and things like this one here that you have, um, you can just remove those with your knife and get it sort of reasonably flat before you carry on scraping. And you'll find your knife will just go over it a lot more easily then. And then you can just dome over, round over with your knife, those cut ends, just to make them a bit more comfortable in the hand. And they look a bit nicer. Doming the bottom of the walking stick not only makes it look nice, but um, it also helps to stop the bottom from mushrooming in, in use. You know, if you're not planning on putting some sort of protective cap over the end, this will at least um, make sure it lasts a bit longer. So that is your basic thumbstick. It's comfortable to hold. It's a nice place for your thumb to go. It's good and stout. It's gonna be strong. The height of it, when my arm is down by my side, my forearm is pretty much horizontal. Um, and that's a good height for me. And you could call it done there. You know, if you just needed a stick to help to help you out while you were on a walk. Um, you could cut yourself a bit of hazel and you could make one of these that you could either just get rid of at the end of your walk because it served its purpose um, or you could take it home and embellish it a bit at home. But I'm out here in the woods for a couple of hours. The sun's shining. It's a beautiful little bit of woodland. Maggie's quite content. So I'm gonna sit down and um, I'm gonna do a bit of carving on this walking stick to make it a bit more interesting to look at. So I'm going to carve a spiral design all the way down the length of the walking stick. Um, and to do that, I've just got a pencil with me and I'm going to draw literally a spiral line all the way down. It's not easy, but try and keep the angle of the line, if you see what I mean, the same and that way you'll get your spacings even between each twist. Now you're gonna to get to points like here 
where unfortunately my line crosses over where that knot is there, where there was a, another branch coming out. That's going to create a bit of a problem because that bit of wood there is going to be much harder than the rest of it, but we'll deal with that when the, when the time comes. Doesn't matter if your line isn't very neat, your pencil line, because you're going to cut all that away when you start carving it. It's just literally so you've got something to follow when you're, when you're carving it with your knife. Well, I don't know how well you can see that, but that line is on there. It's not brilliant, but it'll do. Like I said, it's only something for, for me to follow while I'm carving, and that goes all the way up to the top. Now I bought my carving kit with me today, so I've got my little, my little chip knife from Ben Orford. This is a beautiful, beautiful carving knife, um, and it'll be just the job for this. I could probably do it with my, with my bigger knife, um, you know, if if I needed to. But um, you know, this is a very thick blade, and it's not. This is better for heavier tasks, you know, finer work like this. Really, you need a you need a small purpose-made, purpose-designed. Um, carving knife, really, which is what this is. So all I'm going to do is using my pencil line as a guide, I'm just going to carve in, I'm going to come, come away from the line slightly and then carve in towards the centre of that line and just keep going down on one side all the way down following the line and then I'm going to turn the stick over and come at it from the other direction and that'll basically, that'll take out a V all the way along but in a line if you see what I mean. I'm using a cut here where I'm using my thumb to get a bit more pressure on it. You notice my hand and everything is well behind this. This, this knife here is razor sharp. So the last thing I want to be doing is slipping and cutting into my hand. Um, so just make sure your fingers and everything are well behind. And then I'm just pushing with my thumb just to give it a bit more power and a bit more control because, you know, I can control how much force I give the blade and, um, and stop it when I get to that line so it doesn't end up cutting through. Okay, knife safety tip number two, folks. Uh, when you're using your thumb to push the back of your knife, make sure your thumb doesn't slip over the end of the blade because that point there is also very, very sharp. And that's exactly what I just did. <laughs> uh, and stupidly, I didn't bring my first aid kit, so I haven't even got a plaster to put on it. So I'm gonna have to put the rubber band, the rubber strap off my whittling kit around my thumb just so I don't bleed all over my thumbstick. Grr. And then when you get as close as you want to the end, you just simply turn it around and go back the other way. So now you're cutting towards the cut you've just done and then hopefully where they meet in the middle you get a bit of wood that comes out. You find that these chips come out a lot more easily because you've basically you've kind of created a almost like a stop cut I suppose and you're just going to it you just you know you're just removing that last bit. So here's this is that big knot again I know it's going to be a bit tougher here yeah, I wasn't wrong. Right, I've got as far as I want to get to the end and it's all just roughed out at the moment. So I've taken the worst of it out and now I'm going to go back with the knife and just tidy it all up, make it perhaps a little bit deeper in areas and make it as even as I can all the way along.
well that's starting to take shape quite nicely now. Uh, the other thing I brought with me out of my carving kit is some sandpaper. Now I know this is controversial. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of carvers out there who don't believe in using it, but um, I'm not one of them. I've only just cut this piece of hazel, so this is, you know, very much green wood. Um, really what needs to happen is this needs to dry out. Normally I would sand this later. So I've got some bits of sandpaper out of my carving kit, um, but what I need is something to use to get into the shape of these grooves. Now I could just roll the sandpaper up and, and try and get in there, but I find it a lot easier to, to use a stick or a pencil or something that's about the right diameter and then wrap my sandpaper around that. So that's what I'm gonna do. My thumb's bleeding again. So yeah, it's just a matter of running the sandpaper along and, and just smoothing out all those kind of chips and, and edges left from the knife. And you can just rotate your walking stick as you go. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. All that needs now is a bit of time just to, um, just to dry out and then I can give it another sand and uh, get, a, get a coat of oil on it. I'll give it several coats of oil. Probably like a, a linseed oil or walnut oil is quite nice. A few coats, really let it soak in and that will protect it and it will darken up. It's very light at the moment being freshly cut, but that will go a lovely, nice, dark honey color once that's dried out and once it's been oiled. So yeah, next time you're out in the woods and you come across a nice stand of hazel, Look out for a nice straight pole with a V in it and make yourself a thumbstick. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.